Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Hello, good afternoon to you all. So I'm going to share with you some very relevant aspects. The use of 5G and uh, different uh, cases. The use of drones, which is uh, one of the main fields that are going uh, to be used in our everyday life. And uh, specifically, we are going to talk about the case uh, of the predictive maintenance of electricity grids. First of all, why? It is an important business opportunity. We think that um, main predictive maintenance in electrical grids is, is key. Right now, when we do the predictive maintenance, we use this uh, type of solutions and with different uh, costs, very high costs, because they are using everything related to, to helicopters or everything related uh, to other on-field costs. So these uh, figures are very relevant when we need to, to do this maintenance of very big surfaces done regularly. So normally we have uh, some problems as uh, some complexity in the maintenance because we need to identify the type of operations and uh, the type of material and also the extension they need to cover, we are talking about hundreds of kilometers in situations in which it is not easy to access in between mountains or in valleys or in very complicated regions. And then this type of maintenance is very relevant to them, but it's also very costly. They have to do this uh, prevention or um, prediction using the traditional existing means. When we deploy the predictive maintenance solutions, we focus on covering more than one uh, use case. Normally, there, we, there are a number of elements uh, that use these technologies in order to achieve this holistic vision. So here you can see what we extract from the data when we talk about electrical networks. We detect the corrosion materials in electrical networks, the isolating material, and we can do a revision of the impact through thermal cameras that allow us to understand which is the impact when we lose performance on, or if there are any failures and also combined with the predictive maintenance, a mapping of everything that is being used and also an inventory of uh, the maintenance of the network itself. So it's not only maintenance, but we also do an inventory of the equipment we are going to maintain. And also thermographic revision in substations to see the performance of the substations. If we compare them to existing patterns, we can detect uh, the gas, the presence of a gas, and it means that it is losing performance, the SF6 leak detection, and something which is pretty obvious, but happens, we see the detection of birds' nets, nests and weeds. It is not weird to find this type of situations, and also we need to make some decisions correcting it and trying to prevent uh, accidents for such situations and uh, I'm going to talk you uh, I'm going to talk to you about the proposal it is uh, the most important part and uh, some of uh, the capabilities of the group so to us from drones to the critical part, the value of data in reports and business insights. In the, we are going to give an added value to this type of solutions. 
and also to take into account all the components and so and um, also in electrical networks and offering the solution that integrates all the components and this is here We understand the drone like an element in the Internet of Things. It is the first sensor that we use. And the other element that changes is that instead of using a static, static sensor, we use a dynamic sensor, not a static one, a dynamic one. So we have the drone, the element that flies, and the sensors in the drone. And we do like a puzzle depending on the use. So we have different types of sensors depending on the type of use. So we have uh, drones uh, uh, that flying in, in indoors, uh, and uh, they are very precise when flying. We have other types of uh, drones. Uh, they move loads, uh, and uh, they can transport the loads, and they also can uh, stand uh, uh, gusts of wind and then we have uh, drones that are supposed to, to be more efficient at the long distances instead of using the typical configuration of helixes they use uh, fixed wings and they can be more efficient at horizontal level for long distances. And then we integrate all these to different sensors and uh, this is where we obtain the information, the high definition cameras, multi-spectral cameras, LIDAR sensors or thermal cameras. And uh, they give us uh, different information. And in general, we have uh, one single sensor and uh, sometimes we need to combine it with the different sensors in order to extract uh, different types of information. And then the other element is communications. It is a key element and we want to change it, how we are operating drones nowadays. The main element that we have is 5G. So we always define two types of communications when we talk about uh, flight in drones. So who is controlling the flight itself and uh, how the drone has its navigation systems that allow us to make decisions in order to take control of the flying element. And then the information obtained by the sensor, the leader, the cameras, and they use the same network, but they use different channels. A priority is always security. So it is important because for the first time, we have the possibility to obtain data in real time without risking the security. And it is something we can do in the design of these devices because we integrate communications in the design of the drone. So we create these communication channels between the drone as a flying element, an autonomous vehicle, and then communications, the sensor and the internet of things. So with these two channels, we can use other components that we will be able to see. But normally, the prioritization and uh, depending on the processing, we can include an edge computing because otherwise we will not be able to use the cloud. And, uh, and then the other component is, uh, okay, we have this flying uh, element and uh, how? it can fly. So we have uh, three different components depending on the regulation, on the authorization, etc. The first one would be uh, it would be managed by a pilot in a traditional way. It's going to be manned. They can uh, program the flight the way it's been done nowadays. And then we have the semi-autonomous uh, flight. We have pilots, but they are in a remote uh, controls, remote center, and it can be used for certain uses, not for all of them. But uh, we will introduce them 
and they are going to have uh, they are going to have more coverage. And then finally, something that it's going to happen, and in many countries it's still working, is the autonomous flight, and uh, it we plan the movement uh, in an autonomous way. And additionally, we have these two components, uh, and uh, also the pilot. Uh, sometimes uh, they don't want to manage it, uh, so if we cannot use it, uh, also the maintenance of the drone as an element that has to do some operations and uh, doing this maintenance to have uh, different operations and uh, also including the proposal as a Telefonica. Another important element is the certification. So we have another component that it's going to appear soon. Blockchain, we certify two elements. We certify all related to the service and the maintenance. So what's operative, the number of hours, the level of performance, and everything is registered in order to do a traceability, in order to manage these services something that our customers require, but we can also certify the information that we obtain. So you have a registry where you can verify all the traceability of this information. And uh, when you want to have a certification of what happens during the maintenance, if it's a third company, for example, they have to report to the public administration, they can have a holistic vision of everything that was managed during the maintenance and also can certify uh, the process through geolocation mechanism, um, cameras, video, and all the different elements that were substituted are reflected in this blockchain. And this allows us to control what's going on. This is relevant because the administrations are going to start asking for total control of their infrastructures when we talk about third countries. And also this will allow us to simplify this predictive maintenance. And another element that is key and that is uh, critical with an added value, is everything related to the analytics. So which type of uh, uh, data we have. Uh, we have a model which is the inventory of all the assets uh, of all the customers, and we can do an inventory of all the elements, and this allows us uh, to uh, follow the next model and do a digital twin of all the processes because we have everything digitalized and it's geolocated with all the required information to us. It's very important because we have the possibility uh, to update the inventory in a very short period of time. When we started, I talked about this situation. Is it really expensive to do this maintenance? So it is not done as often as it should be done because of its cost. We could do it every month like this because the drone is very efficient cost-wise. So we could have an inventory and detect any failures. But the most important part and uh, that uh, makes more productivity is the detection of failures. We are going to do this maintenance here. We will be able to detect the different anomalies, problems in the isolating materials, in the electrical distribution, in the heating, overheating, malfunction. Um, we have uh, many features that will allow us to detect a number of patterns. And with these patterns, we can create an algorithm. And uh, 
there are some times in which the algorithm is going to forecast the uh, periodicity of, of the maintenance and uh, also we can do a maintenance, an immediate maintenance. And uh, this allows uh, the customers to have very well organized vision of the resources and where the resources should be allocated. And uh, also they can program it in a more efficient way. And uh, there are two types of scenarios when we talk about maintenance. Either we do an over maintenance, so we are paying much more than what's needed. Or the other way around, there are some losses because of the maintenance was not done and there was a, a stop in the process. And this is a key aspect and we can achieve a good balance here. And let me underline that this is one of the key elements to us because uh, we are going to give an added value to all this. And in the end, if we change this, this is a predictive maintenance. And which are the main benefits? Well, we've seen them during the presentation. And basically, we can sum them up in, sum them up in three blocks. First of all, we increase the security of workers working in these uh, critical infrastructures. We prevent uh, accidents uh, and uh, I can help the worker locate uh, the maintenance operation. Also the flights with helicopters uh, are risky. When you fly a drone, it is not risky at all. So we increase uh, the labor security and uh, we can improve the quality of the services we are offering so we can talk about sustainability of these solutions because we improve the downtime and then there are no problems with quality i can give you some examples like, for example, the Philomena storm and its impact uh, and the reaction uh, capability is immediate and then the service that we offer is better. And then, finally, uh, the optimization of costs. It is very relevant because, uh, first of all, the service itself uh, is better managed and uh, the maintenance itself. We can adjust uh, the maintenance uh, cost in these infrastructures and this will allow us to do the maintenance in a more efficient way. And uh, one of the main advantages is that we can incorporate more case uses. So if we, for example, change the architecture or other patterns, uh, or all the services we can include and uh, for example green region detection invading the infrastructure weeds or losing of uh, tension in the cables we can incorporate all this information through the different algorithms and uh, we are even more efficient in the maintenance and the service that we offer to the customer. And then you can ask me, how are we going to commercialize this? Well, we have flexibility in a digital model. One of the most important things in this project is being flexible and being able to give an answer to the demands of the customer. So we have two main models. The first one is the service mode. So everything that is required is included in a commercial pack that can be adjusted depending on the KPIs of the customer. Uh, hour, kilometer, 
or any other KPI in which we can model the costs. Here we can include some components and parameters and geographical regions, coverage, availability that are going to alter the cost and allow us to personalize the pack. And another model is depending on the asset and the propriety of the asset, we can include our uh, other services, we can add other assets. Imagine that the customer already have uh, these uh, assets uh, and then we define which other components that are needed. So we're talking about um, uh, artificial intelligence, drone, communications. It's a more, tradi it's a more traditional model. So we have these uh, two models, uh, a service mode in which the customer uh, forgets about uh, uh, any of the components, it's a hassle-free mode, and then a mode, a model depending on the component. And then finally, I just gave you a first stage. These would be the first service, but there are many more that are linked to the same model. So we have a lot of case studies, and one of the things we have discovered is that drones is a an ongoing uh, option and uh, for example for mining we are talking about 3d mapping geolocation of equipment in the mine and uh, material detection even in order to do some emergency repairs with uh, these uh, drones uh, in order to minimize the impact. We are talking about uh, different kilometers and, uh, and roads that are secondary roads. So all this uh, positioning is uh, helping mines to be more efficient in these uh, big spaces. And then in industry, there are two main components one related to logistics uh, and the identification and also in the automatized uh, storing units and also when we need to send elements from one position to another in a distribution uh, chain. We have some examples in some of the main car manufacturers in Europe. Uh, so if we detect a, a malfunctioning component or there was a deficiency in the process, then we can correct that, sending these uh, parts through the drones, using the drones. And another very important aspect uh, that we are exploring is the port. We can do an identification of the sustainability to prevent the pollution of the water because of the wrong use of materials. We can detect containers and uh, we can distribute the load of all the different containers as well. And uh, for oil and gas and uh, the maintenance of infrastructures and uh, utilities and energy and the air generators and also in the smart cities so we also have everything related to two loads so when we can do more than 100 and 200 kilometers <clears throat> and uh, in precision as well and uh, drones can do a deployment of all these and then logistics so 
So this is something we can use and uh, using the capabilities that Telefonica has. And well, that was all. Thank you very much. No sé si había con ahí. no con ¿No había con ahí? ¿Alguna pregunta? ¿Duda? No había, es que no sé si había con ahí o no. Si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, perdonar, o alguna duda, any question, dabs. Any question? <laughs>